The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse. With your host, John Logan. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648, internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, John Logan. Hi guys, welcome to the show. It's Monday morning. I hope you guys had a good Christmas. Kind of got a weird week this week too. You got one of those years where New Year's Day's in the somewhat the middle of the week to the end of the week also and just like christmas is kind of be kind of a weird week and towards the end of the week thursday new year's day and then friday <coughs> probably gonna have a lot of people not at their desk again just like last friday and the stock market has to some degree proven that it will drift up in the last couple of weeks of december uh drifting up meaning a huge rally so you know we don't see anything other than that really happening on the u.s stock market so that's kind of the way i'm looking at it statistically historically speaking and just again we're in a long-term trend up and we found support again and uh the breadth has been positive on a lot of the things that we look at from the compilation of our profiles in a consolidated manner on most of the global indices mainly the s p 500 which is what i'm talking about right now and Not in a very inverse related situation, the U.S. Treasury notes and bonds have kind of hung in there. So I'm showing the U.S. 10-year right now, and this is a long-term view. This is our weekly view on the March contract. And the reason I'm pulling it up is because we've got a new weekly profile that's appeared. And just to give some more long-term numbers, which are actually higher than the previous profile, and uh, what does that say? Uh, it says a lot, actually. And I'm going back in time a little bit here. Again, this is a March contract. But as we see these, these profiles continue to really edge higher. I mean, if, I don't know if you can see that. So <laughs> in the midst of a, a U.S. stock market, this just kind of caught on complete fire towards the end here. But those numbers are, and these are exemplified in the scanner itself. I'm just going to pull up the scanner for a second. And, and I'm talking about the TAS profile scanner. Uh, we've got 125. Okay. So I'm going to pull this over into my screen for viewing here. And I've got up the uh, usual currencies that we look at here. If you've, if you've got some, some different currencies, spot currencies, that you want to interject into this situation, if you have the scanner, uh, if, you're, if you're a customer, we'll be more than happy to take a look at adding that. And these are the usual suspects of the futures world I'm looking at here. And here's some of the ETFs. Again, just to review this thing, we've got about 2,500 instruments here now, quite a few different uh, categories. We're changing some things around. We're probably going to have the Eurostock 600 relatively quick, um, so keep your eye on that. That's for guys trading Euronext stocks and things like that. And uh, we're putting the DAX in here, so uh, that's going to be something interesting for guys that are trading the DAX to get the breadth on the DAX. That is a very volatile instrument. you got to buckle your seatbelt and trade that. If you've been trading it, you know what I'm saying. So here's the 10-year uh, and here's a new weekly profile. And these are in decimals, so we've got about 125, 14, 15 down there at the bottom. New profile up here. We're within that profile, therefore, a gray cell is there. And we've got a new profile attempting to appear possibly tomorrow um, or today on the daily. So that being said, and there's our S&P 500 breadth. There's really two components to this scanner. There's the breadth situation, which you can look at different global indices we're adding more and more and more of these um so stay tuned we'll grandfather you in if you go ahead and get it on tfnn now for those but uh the second part of the scanner is just the filtering mechanism that you guys are probably aware of that you can go in here and try to find ripe opportunities based on the group or groups that you want to choose so here's the situation on the and those are those inflection points on the weekly this was something <coughs> Considering that we're in a long-term uptrend, 
Um, I've been terrified to really short treasuries, and still am. Even though we had a pullback from that, you know, one twenty recently. This is our daily here. Let me just get back in time a little bit. We had that massive spike up back in October, but the recent move up uh, back in what was that day? Reached the highs on uh, December sixteenth. Uh, we came back into an inflection point here. That was kind of time to pick a battle for me on the long side. Here's the situation to try to pick a battle on the long side. Stops can be oriented around these inflection points. And I've been a little hesitant on trying to short things below profiles here because that long-term profile is still in force. And uh, I just, you know, really think that, you know, we, we've got to see some some confirming technical damage Um to really get short these treasuries, and I just don't see that right now. And I see the market on pretty much all-time highs, and now we're poking our head back above these daily and for lows. So again, I think this is something to be bought. I was passing on these shorts down here, and you, if you've been watching this show and you've been listening to me ever, uh, you know I've been passing on shorts from treasuries for a long time here, and that's been you know pretty good mo. Um, and you've got the comments from Yellen sitting there all the time, and it's just basically no mystery at this stage that they are seem seemingly 90% concerned with what the U.S. stock market is doing to uh, dictate what Fed policy is these days. So if that's the case, and you you know been watching these situ- these relationships between the Treasuries and the stock market over the last so specifically over the last couple of months, but um, historically, over the last couple of years, you know that um, they're sitting there, like you know, I don't know what you call them. I guess uh, like a caretaker of the U.S. stock market. And uh, now you've got a possible. You got. I, I, I'd like to see a close up here above this now to start thinking about getting on the long bandwagon again. Um, but you know, we we had some great opportunities here. Get long, get long, long on the breakouts, um, and I think it's an opportunity again in my opinion and uh that's just the way i'm looking at treasuries i'm not looking at it from the short side obviously and here's the cool thing um you had 126.05 and a half 06 rounded off as an inflection point on the bottom and you got 126.06 very same neighborhood basically on the daily in the 240 getting back into those fair auctions so we're gonna have to watch that and as we look at those treasuries we're gonna have to take a look at the S&Ps and kind of look at this relationship remembering that let me just pull this up here there's December 15th this is the daily on the March contract remember that was the highs of the notes of the bonds let me just pull it up let me make sure Make sure that that was the date we were looking at here. Here's the 10 year, and that is the 16th. Okay, so the 16th was the highs. I thought that was a little weird. The 16th were the highs, and there's the 16th right there. Um, so if you haven't been watching our show every morning, let's just read some comments here. We had some breadth change to negative on our dailies on the S&Ps right in there, the, the, the ninth, 10th. So that gave us some reasons um, to look at this on an intermediate time frame, the short situation on the S&Ps, and then we had breadth turn positive again around the 17th. So what does that mean that, uh, for that Treasury S&P relationship? So, you know, as we look at those, we've been looking at passing on the shorts on Treasuries, just a little bit of review here. Market goes up. Treasuries have, to some degree, for the most part, gone sideways. Market goes down as we started, you know, the 8th into the 16th. Treasuries go up. So, again, it's eliminated one side of the marketplace for me in general to, to, to kind of get away from going long or short treasuries in general until we see some, some serious technical damage that can be leaned on. Um, but the breadth turning negative on the intermediate and then catching this S&P trade down here, sitting on that 1968 area, and there's the 1961.50, and then we had that kind of retest to 68 the next day, which were those weekly unfair lows down here. Um, 
that gave us some reasons with the Brett still positive on the weekly hanging in there on the S&Ps. And when I speak of that, I mean to say that this particular breadth positive situation was hanging in there on the long term. So we call it a major inflection point in the long term weekly, and we still were breadth positive on the weekly. And that was the place to pick a battle there. So that all being said, at this stage, um, the S&Ps are still above weekly profiles, and this is all in the scanner, 2071.75. Trading 20, let's see where we're trading right now. We're trading 2079 right now. Um, and again, we've reached a low this morning of 2076, it looks like, on the S&P. So, you know, what does that mean for treasuries? Treasuries are going to more than likely, if we can start migrating back down below 2071, and we're at 2750 again right now. We may start seeing the possibility of a new profile attempting to appear on the daily, on the S&Ps. And then we can really use that 126.06 area as something to lean on and orient stops around from the long side on the, on the notes, on the March contract. So, again, are the S&Ps still in a long-term uptrend? Without question. Um, if we start churning around here at the top, uh, I think the worst thing for Treasuries is that they may go sideways. Um, I, I think the again the the situation on the Treasuries diving, um, you need to see some some decent technical damage. And as we looked at those weekly profiles continuing to scale up on the ten year, um, you know you can't ignore that. I mean th that means that the the balanced areas for the ten year keep climbing does everybody understand that and that means that until we see those price action go below those balanced areas as we've trailed up on the on the long term weekly we're not going to see any major technical damage and we're looking at buying support all the way up as long as that continues to happen and also buying breakouts so there's a lot at play here i know it's the end of the year um I'm hoping right after the first of the year, um, you know, some people will possibly start taking some profits on the S and P's, and we can really, really start getting, you know, into maybe some more scale up situations on the on the treasuries. Um, but if if the S and P's again start, you know, pulling back significantly, and the treasuries don't want to go any higher, then you've got to take a look at that whole relationship again, um, because we've kind of been banking on that situation that i spoke of earlier for for a while and, and as traders you just got to keep turning the rents the same way until you're told differently we talk about that all the time we're going to go to our first break and when we come back we're going to talk a little bit about just small amounts of time on the treasuries uh we're going to get into a couple of the usual suspects down the list on the commodities and uh, start hitting some stocks that may not be on your radar screen that hopefully could be we'll be right back folks TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
check out the new look of Tiger TV. Now you can see all hosts, charts, and computer screens live in high definition. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV. Now, crystal clear in high definition, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't seen the new look of Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. John takes your phone calls now. 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 Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Um, just wanted to point out some phone numbers here. I don't. <laughs> They always tell me to mention these, but I always seem to not mention them. Uh, calling in from the U.S., 877-927-6648. Anytime you want to call in and, and have you know anything talked about or, or just discuss something, that's the number. And then internationally, 727-445-1044. Feel free to call in anytime. Um, we can take a look at some of the instruments that you may want to look at and talk about. So here's the situation on the Russian ruble. Uh, we had talked last week, and this is the daily situation on the ruble. We talked last week about this yeah, 55 general area, 55.30. Um, that didn't hold. Uh, we did get a little bit of a rattling around around there, but then we had the kind of the close down below and, and the shift down below. And I'm not a big fan of going short this. So, again, the theme always is the name of the game for – for me in particular in trading, is lose a little, lose a little, lose a little, make a lot. So this was one of those lose a little situations relative to the make a lot situation that we had been in since around the 33 area on the ruble, which actually ultimately ended up reaching almost 80. So, again, we had a not, not a lot of reasons to get out of that trade and a lot of reasons to actually add to it. <laughs> As we climbed up, we found support, found support, found support, and we had talked about you know, as we got into 80 on the ruble, that, you know, the fundamental news that come out before that 
massive. I mean, we had some obviously huge moves in the rule before, but before we got that massive move up, we had the Russian government extend the interest rate on their benchmark uh, government product from around 10% to around 17%. That didn't stop it, but we talked about that was kind of the blow-off move, and let's just kind of let this thing rattle around for a while and find some support. We found some support around that 58 area that provided a decent trade back up into 65, and we're talking about, yeah, okay, you found a little short-term blip there. That's 700 pips, guys, in one day. Now, this was what, in 24 hours, we had a 50 to, eight. we had a 3,000, it was 2,700 pip move in 24 hours. Then we had another 700 pip move in 24 hours, and that was catching really good support to the tick almost off the 58 general area. We reached the low of 58.09, and the inflection point was 57.99. And in an instrument that was really tr- trading in 25 pip moves, literally bid offer type stuff, you know, you can't complain about that type of scenario. And we actually got another. Uh, bounce off of that area from 58 back up into you know 60 and 60 and a half so there's another 250 point move off that inflation point came back down below um, obviously that was the lose a little after the make a lot and then we had a little lose a little again the stop out situation here um, got back above this inflection point and actually reached some targets above around that 58 area again so 58 is the big time area here as you've noticed, we bought support off of it, rattled around, caught some good moves. Now, former support's acting as resistance, and now we're back down into this 50, 55, 30 area. So what do you do now? Um, we're trading about 50. As you can see, this thing is trading so wild just constantly. It's just amazing to watch this. So, again, I am a buyer of 55.30. We've already done that today already. Let me just pull up the 240s here. Um, we're still trading above profiles on the 240s. So, this let me just point out that inflection point again. The 55.30 area is still the kind of the, the uncle point for me, and I'm looking for this thing to move higher and more than likely retest the 58 area and possibly even move higher here because, uh, you know, that's the way I'm looking at these charts, and I'm still biased towards, towards the long side, which is actually the devaluation of the ruble in general. So, again, you know, we've done some decent analysis on this, but be prepared. Put your stops in. I think you got to kind of say uncle below the 55 40 area or 55 30 area if you're trading the ruble and that's just the way it's going but we've had that major move up in the inflection point already this morning um, which has been again a 250 pip move already in one day so just be prepared if you're looking at that product so we're going to take a look at one more thing before we get a break here the euro most guys out there are trading the euro um, again this is the gift that keeps on giving got a new profile that appeared on friday uh, and we got an inflection point that we got to pay attention to. We had one that we benchmarked off of, 122.73. Now that leverage point is 122.05, 122.06. And these are all put out in the scanner, folks. So these inflection points, you can take a look at them in a real quick, concise manner. We'll be right back. We're going to hit some other commodities and take a look at uh, some of the stocks that may possibly be on your radar screen. We'll be right back. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading, and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads.
If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. I was just noticing, looking at my, uh, my head on the TFNN monitor here, it looks like a, I should have gained some weight over the holidays already, and it verifiably looks that way um so uh, try to adjust that soon <laughs> um somebody asked me to take a look at wheat here um and we're going to take a look at it and i was just kind of stating in the den that you know I had a pretty long walk with one of my good friends who runs a grain elevator down in the eastern part of the state this is the situational wheat this is march wheat and you know you know, he was talking about corn possibly diving back down in, into the $3 area. Not $3, just $3.90. I'm talking $3 a bushel, period, which it never hit before. Um, and wheat, I talked to him about wheat a little bit. And, you know, wheat's something that's a little bit harder call. Um, it, it's got a little bit different um, factors involved with it. But just because his feelings on corn this is obviously fundamental stuff but just because his fe feelings on corn <coughs> were relatively bearish um you know wheat's got that kind of alternative feed uh connotation to it when it comes to corn and the spread on wheat corn it was it was really wild i mean like in the old days you know that spread was just traditionally around a dollar all the time um 
you know, we've seen it spread out to three dollars, four dollars, and uh, you know, if you can kind of buckle your seatbelt in and, and start rolling some some months out, you know, those are types of situations where you know, hopefully, a rubber band will kind of stretch back into position. But all that being said, you know, wheat's kind of made it a, a serious move up, and you know, as we looked at this thing from the breakdown around the seven dollar a bushel area on the on the March contract, we really didn't have any closes or any reasons to start thinking otherwise until we start. We had a new profile up here, which was which was lovely, down here around the middle of October. So when we had that close above, and I, you know. I, you know, sometimes when I listen to myself later, I critique myself. I'm like, well, why are you doing all this, you know, Monday morning quarterback stuff? These people already know this. But I want to reiterate, going back in time, when, you know, it was okay to go long and not okay to be short. And this basically kind of, pre- you know, forecasted that a little bit ahead of time. And then we had the confirmation, the long-term close above. And then we got that gift by the retest, if you can see, back into that upper inflection point around 515. So when that happened, you know, th- then you can orient your long-term stops back in the fair auction and definitely below the fair auction, below that 491. That's the major uncle point. But as this thing's been climbing, there haven't been a lot of reasons to, to really get out of that, you know, long attitude and here's the daily situation so again the reason i'm showing this is not to go oh look how our stuff did and you know everything works out and the guy gets a cheerleader at the end of the movie every time it doesn't always work like that um but that being said we've got a a new super wide profile that's appeared on the daily all right now you know this is a lot of room to give this to, to hang into a trade and be wrong but right now um you know, I, I, I really, I, I don't think it's a great opportunity to be, to be long or short wheat right now. I think we've had that blow off move. We've got that new yellow bar attempting to appear in wheat. And I'm going to pull up our scanner really quick here, and it's you know this this scanner makes it really easy for me to do analysis, um, and hopefully it will allow you guys to to do the same thing. You've got a kind of a a yellow cell appearing on your radar screen here. You've got you know, in the balanced area here on the on the daily in the 240s, you got a little bit of momentum on the on the, but you get the inflection points just put right to you there. And if you want to see everything in a kind of a landscape view, I love this thing. It just gives you all the inflection points here right in front of you. So, um, and then you know, you drill down into your own charts. Everybody can usually get access to charts almost for free these days. Uh, and here's the situation on the 240. So. <coughs> You got a short-term breakout situation above 16, 620 that you could, you know, continue the long move up. You've had some areas where you could try to buy some support, buy some support to stay with the long-term trend. That was obviously kind of the lose a little situation there, um, but we haven't broken back above 240s in a while. So this is an opportunity, really. And again, the long term and the intermediate term. I'm not a I'm a big fan of of kind of trading more off daily inflection points at this stage in my life. Maybe I'm, you know, I just as I get older, I desire boring more than exciting situations. Um, but as you can see here, the 240s have kind of regulated this trade up. They kind of regulated the the little bit of a move down. And uh, again, just to reiterate, above the 620, you've got a little bit of a breakout area. Then you can use that as somewhat of a fence to on a short-term basis at least, to, to allow this to climb higher. But right now, I just don't think you have a ton of leverage right now in wheat, but that is a little bit of a, you know, kind of get back into the technical uh, positiveness, if you will, on wheat getting back above 620. And uh, that's just the way I'm looking at this right now, if that makes sense. I don't know if that helped. hope it did. Okay, so as we look uh, down the line here, I want to pull up corn. Um, this is the one that you know has really been cool. We'll take a look at corn here. Um, again, r- r- about the same time that we started moving up. Again, you see the tandem trade here. Basically, uh, here's the eh, let's see what is that inflection point? The 350 area. Let's just call it. That we started breaking out, technically speaking, on the on the long side, and again, the, the scanners got all this baked in the cake here. Um, and again, 
you know, we kind of got back above, you know, balanced area. That's okay. Got back above the 394 area. Um, but here's the trading opportunities, I guess. Um, getting back down below 404 uh, and obviously below that big kind of psychological $4 area, that's going to kind of start providing some technical damage on the downside if you're looking at this thing peeling back. I don't see a lot of reasons to start being a, you know, the the guy who saves the day and picks the top of the market and starts shorting grains up here. I don't see any reasons to do that, especially on wheat, especially on corn right now. Um, let's let some of these other guys go in here and, you know, swing the sword and battle it out when there's not a lot of reasons, in my opinion, technically speaking, to even start stepping in on the short side. Um, if that's kind of the take, you know, that, that you've gathered from Rich, uh, which is, you know, some, and, uh, and, and Larry, uh, you know, may fundamentally be slanted towards the, the bearish side, but uh, they'll probably tell you it may not be the ripest time to even start picking the battles on that side of the fence. And I don't think that's the case either. Um, so, and, you know, but you got also got to take into consideration that my buddies that I just spoke of has been very bearish. There's some other folks out there very bearish, and they may keep getting squeezed out here. And you may see... Uh, because of that situation, you may see just a power move up on us on some report that that just kind of gets all those guys out of the market from holding those positions, and then you'll see that relaxing move down possibly. So, um, just keep that in mind from a general trading 101 standpoint. I got to take a look at beans because this is. Let's see here, make sure I got the right day. Okay, this is something I. I like to trade, um, and we're back to an inflection point here on the daily. This is uh, January beans here. So, again, this is something to pay attention to here. One ten fifty four. Uh, you know, have let me just pull up the long term here. And again, it, you know, all these things kind of coincided. And, and beans gave you just an awesome, awesome situation—a retest back at that nine seventy four area, and then you know, obviously got close to it again provide another trading opportunity but uh the long-term trend is up without question on beans but you know you've you're sitting here and by the same token of what i just said on corn and wheat we may have you know these things drift a little bit higher i'd love to see this thing close above 1054 and then possibly be looking at this from the long side beans a little bit different animal and a lot of folks have been bearish on beans actually because of all the, the decent weather and supplies out there um but again i think uh you know you got to turn the rinse the same way and uh, i think beans has actually a little bit better chance of spiking up than the other two at this stage and that's the way i'm looking at it, is buying breakouts above 1054 and we've got navigator still above zero here on our daily and continuing to climb on a contra basis and getting close to zero here so we may have a little bit of a, a kind of a meeting of the indicators uh, to coincide with a big move up here as an exasperation move up actually on corn and wheat that may be in sympathy. So that's uh, that's my take on beans. I'm a little bit more bullish on beans than anything else, actually. Taking a look at gold, we got to mention this. <coughs> uh, this has been a really tough call lately. Uh, there's been a lot of factors that could and should have affected gold and gold's just been kind of languishing around we've kind of gotten back into that former support that i was looking at around 1200 1199 uh we kind of got back into there and caught it as resistance now um u.s dollar situation which involves this trade usually here's the march contract on the u.s dollar cleared some hurdles there the other day talked about that 8961 buying the breakouts then we got that just awesome retest just a lovely situation from a trading standpoint close above we'll come back and retest and off to the races again um but here's a 240 situation on the dollar so you know if if the 90 90 20 area holds on the dollar this is that 240 This is that 240 situation that's been regulating the dollar up again, starts breaking down. Um, you know, we may start seeing a new daily profile attempt to appear on the daily, and therefore gold, you got to kind of keep your eye on all that because, you know, I've been, 
you know, just more biased towards the long side on gold than anything else, but able to be stopped out around that area. Um, if we get closes above 1200, I think you got to look at this from the long side again. Um, but right now we just don't have that. So gold, I'm just kind of passing on these, you know, any shorting opportunities and just seeing if we can get above 1200, get a close and maybe just would be again, awesome to get a retest of that area. 1200. Uh, let's take a look at, we looked at the U.S. stock. We looked. I'm sorry. We looked at the S and P's and the notes. I just want to look at the Nasdaq just to give some numbers for everybody. I want to pull up our scanner again for a second and just pull up the situation on the Nasdaq here. As you can see, these are the inflection points to pay attention to. Uh, we're well above the 4208.70 area on the dailies, and that 4342 sitting up there. So. And again, I'm going to pull up the NASDAQ here really quick just to give a landscape view of those inflection points here. Here's, here's the situation here. So uh, NASDAQ, again, I'm, I'm kind of like the S&P idea here. Um, we just, you know, statistically and historically, we're just kind of looking at indices with the drift up situation towards the end of the year. This is going to be a kind of a, a, a light week. I don't see a lot of major things going on this week, uh, and hopefully after the first year, we'll start seeing a little bit, a little bit of volatility on this, and maybe some downside pressure, possibly from some profit taken right after the beginning of the year. Um, I want to pull up. Hold on, let me see. No, I've got the wrong. I don't want to pull that up. Hold on, guys. This is what I want to pull up. Nikkei, this is what I was looking at this morning. Some guys in Asia were asking about this. Uh, 17,857, that inflection point. We've kind of had a, a pullback straight in 17,698 right now. Uh, as the time of this report, that's around the same as that daily there, 17,720. Um, they're asking, is, you know, is this going to be it for a while for the Nikkei? Uh, the dollar. You know, we've got we're sitting on the precipice on this two forties regulating that trade, but I gotta look at the yen here. Um, and again, we've been passing on all shorts on the yen for a long time since one oh one. And that's been what, two thousand pips ago. Here's the situation on the new profiles appeared Friday on the yen and those unfair highs at or around are at around 120.83. So, what does that all mean for the Nikkei? Um, considering that the dollar may start showing some technical breakdowns there on the 240s, you may have the yen kind of relax a little bit, and uh, therefore the Nikkei may have a more of an extended move down here on what I was trying to show earlier below that 1775 area. So, let me pull that back up. I'm sorry, 17,857, excuse me. So I think we should, we could see some lower moves here on the, on the Nikkei. And you got that 17,920 that coincided. And this is the cool thing. 17,920 coincided with that 17,857. That's going to be the DMC, the lever against. And uh, Orient stops around for the Nikkei right now. We'll be right back, folks. Hang in there. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. 
or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN has just announced a special sale for the Gold Report for a limited time only. To celebrate the 660th weekly issue of Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, that's more than 12 years, TFNN is having a special one-time sale. Right now, you can receive 60 weeks of the Gold Report, that's 14 months for only $600. We're offering Tom O'Brien's dynamic weekly newsletter at only $10 a week, half off the regular monthly price. By taking advantage of this special offer, you also get a signed copy of Tom O'Brien's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, an $88 value. The Gold Report is published every Tuesday and provides subscribers with Tom O'Brien's expert commentary on the industry, as well as detailed information on a variety of mining equities. This offer is valid for current or new subscribers, but is only good through this week and ends this Sunday, December 21st. Lock in the low rate of only $10 a week for The Gold Report by placing your order at the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery in pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before, for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Catch Steve Rhodes as he teaches techniques on technical analysis using pattern recognition, celestial charting, Fibonacci, and other tools. The Trader's Edge, next on TFNN. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Talk to a little bit about trying to show you a couple of stocks here. IBM, in my opinion, um, we've kind of gotten back up into the long-term Unfair lows on the weekly here around that 162.50 area. We talked about that last week. That would be you know, where we would, I hate to say the word hope, but hope it goes back to to provide a maximum leverage point there. Again, you've got to keep in mind by looking at any of these short situations that the market could just drift higher and rising tides lift all boats. That type of scenario could happen. So, uh, again, it might not be the best situation as it stands right now to, to short stocks, but that's a somewhat of a candidate here. Twitter, uh, here we go. Here's the situation in the long term. I don't have to tell you that. Uh, the, the major technical damage started around that 48 area, and we're trading almost 25% lower right now. Actually, we are trading 20, 10, 10, 12, 10. Yeah, about 25% lower right now um, than where that was back in – well, right at the end of October. Um, so, you know, what do we do now? Uh, here's the situation on the daily. You've, you've kind of gone back up almost into that weekly and now we're getting some confirmations here. 37.95 is going to have to be the fence there. That's when I'm orient stops around. But again, um, you know, 
shorting stocks right now here at the end of the year may yeah you know, may may not be the highest probability situation um it's hard to it's hard for me to buy stocks right now and from that because they're just you know have gone through the roof here so i'm I'm staying, you know, and and from what I just said, it's relatively hard to short stock. So it's a difficult uh, scenario, being that we've just gone up so high so fast. Uh, but again, we could drift higher, and you got to keep that in mind because that's kind of what the stats say. So I'm a little bit more partial to trading uh, some of the instruments that we talked about earlier, and um, are kind of waiting for the first of the year to kind of look at the stocks in a little bit different light. Hopefully, um, so again. We, don't, we haven't talked about silver in a while. I just want to kind of pull that up. Uh, silver, in my opinion, you don't have a lot of leverage down here. I'm just kind of patiently waiting for a new daily profile to appear here, and uh, we just haven't gotten that. So I'm kind of laying low on silver, and uh, gold's kind of languishing around. And some guys were asking about that this morning. <laughs> I just don't see a lot of high probability situations on silver right now. Um, we talked about crude oil and natural gas last week quite a bit or not last week that was last week I think beginning of last week here's the situation on crude oil you know we some people have been talking about this you know 55 area being the bottom this is not what you want to see here um, uh, from a long standpoint I'll just tell you right now we've been bearish on crude oil since you know look, but looking back in time and again not to just kind of beat our chest like hey look what Look what has happened in the past, and look uh, how this has been so easy. I know you don't want to hear that, but since around the hundred, we start getting the technical damage. We haven't had the technical damage. We were hoping, you know, again, hope. I hate that word, trading. But if we could get a rally back up into 60, 60, 94, 61, that's that's just going to be lovely for it to go up there and provide another maximum leverage point as we've had in the past. But you've got to look at this now on crude oil. As we are compressing down and you know not wanting to get away from these unfair lows, and we'll more than likely have another flush down on crude oil. So be prepared for that, and be prepared to sell breakouts on the downside on crude oil. Uh, natural gas, uh, we have hit below three dollars, folks, and that was as of Friday. And a lot of we talked about that last week, going into the two dollar area. Um, we'll talk about that tomorrow. We got to hear the music. We'll pick it back up and stay tuned for Steve Rhodes. Be next. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN 